Okay, so I'm so excited that you're here today. This is Vision Eternity Ministries. My name is Lee Klein. We're talking about getting ready for Jesus, about being that beautiful bride that he expects, that beautiful bride without blemish. And we can only get there as Jesus grows us up, as he gets us to be, to look like him, actually. He recreates us in his likeness as we cooperate with him. So get excited with me. Jesus has another lesson for us today. He's so good. He's so in love with us. He so wants to tell us things to come so that we can be ready. He so wants to correct us so we can be ready. So get ready to be corrected. Jesus, we thank you and praise you for teaching us, for correcting us, instructing us. You said you correct those that you love. And although we always don't always, our flesh doesn't always want that correction. We're just going to train it to say, we're going to be corrected, and we're going to follow Jesus. We're going to follow him. We love you and praise you, and we thank you for correcting us today. In Jesus' name, in your name, we pray. Amen. So how are you at Unexpected Company? I'm not very good at it. I haven't been very good at it. But for the last couple of years, Jesus has been saying to me, get ready. Be ready for anything. And I never related it to unexpected company until he started telling me what he wanted me to talk about today. And so when I would have unexpected company, um, for me, it, it, I didn't like it because it's about me. When I'm at home, I have my guard down. I have my plans. I probably didn't clean my house first. Um, maybe I didn't get dressed that day and stayed in my pajamas. So I wasn't ready to represent myself. Um, as I would like to for that company. And what Jesus is saying today is that if we can't be ready for unexpected company in our home, then how are we going to be ready for him when he comes unexpectedly as a thief in the night? Suddenly, he's going to show up. And what he wants us to know is we got to be ready. We got to be ready for that unexpected visit. Are you going to look the way Jesus wants you to look, the way you want to look when you stand before him? Well, he already knows how you look. He already knows you day in and day out, which reminds me of yesterday when um, this thing started with me. When he started already telling me our lesson for today, but I didn't realize it. And um, I was actually hearing a song where I was, and it was singing, it's about me, myself, and I. It's me, myself, and I, and it kept playing over and over again. And I felt a little convicted that um, what I was doing could have been for him instead of for me, as though I was spending this time needlessly on, on on myself, by myself, and he needed me for something else. And so I did repent for that. And, you know, just those kinds of things prove to us we're not ready. And another thing I want to mention is my flesh didn't want to hear what he was saying to me in that moment. And so we have to get our flesh under control. If we get it, give it just a little bit, then it wants more and more. It, it gets out of control, and we have to keep our, our flesh under We can't give it any space because if we do, it's going to take more space. And so our flesh needs to be second, not first. Jesus needs to be first. And so we got to keep our flesh under control. And so that um, when we hear that prompting, that we're not stubborn about, we're not self-willed about listening to that prompting. And so it's a practice. It's a practice of just like when we talk about forgiving seven times, 77 times a day. We make that our lifestyle to forgive. We have to make it our lifestyle to listen to those promptings. Because if we don't, then when Jesus shows up, we're not going to be ready. And so every day, just being ready, start getting ready. Make it a practice to get ready for that unexpected company. Get up every day. This is what Jesus is saying. Get up every day and don't make the day about you. But go ahead and get dressed, wash your face as when you fast. 
get up, wash your face, clean up your house, go ahead and, and have a plan, but make sure the Lord is in it and be ready for unexpected changes. Get ready for him to say whatever he needs to say so that you can be ready. We have to be ready. We can't just wing it. We can't just think that when he shows up, you know, we, we sing this song just as we are, and that's cool. And, and God does expect us just as we are, but he wants us to grow up, to imitate him, to be like him, and to go out and to do his work, to gather in those lost sheep that he's waiting for. And so us, who call ourselves Christians, um, so much of the time are ignoring those promptings and we're letting us, we're letting our flesh rule. And Jesus is calling us out today. He's correcting us. He's instructing us. He's saying, get ready for that unexpected company. Get ready for me to say, well, instead of doing this today, I would like you to go serve that person. Get ready for that. And, and, and then don't, you know, complain about it and, and let your flesh rule. Don't let your flesh rule. Don't do what you want to do. And so that you're ready for that day when Jesus shows up. Thessalonians 5. But as to the suitable times and the precise seasons and dates, brethren, you have no necessity for anything being written to you. For you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the return of the Lord will come as unexpectedly and suddenly as a thief in the night. When people are saying, all is well and secure, and there's peace and safety, then in the moment of unforeseen destruction, ruin and death will come upon them as suddenly as labor pains come upon a woman or child, and they shall by no means escape, for there will be no escape. You're not giving up to the power, but you are not giving up to the power of darkness, brethren, for that day to overtake you by surprise, like a thief, for you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We will not be, we, we do not belong either to the night or to the darkness, according to then, let us not sleep as do the rest. But let us keep wide awake, alert, watchful, cautious, and on our guard. Let us be sober, calm, collected, and circumspect. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But we belong to the day. Therefore, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love in the helmet of hope, of helmet, the hope of salvation. And it's about love. That just remind me, it's about love to be ready to go serve someone, to, to be that person that someone can ring the doorbell and you're saying, come on in. Would you like a cup of coffee? You know, can I do this for you? Can I do that for you? What can I do for you? That's the kind of person God is calling us to be, to put herself aside, to give to the other person rather than to give to herself, rather than serve herself, to be ready to serve that other person. And the peace and the joy and the excitement that comes from that is overwhelming because you're living not self-willed, but in the will of God. I also want to read to you um, Matthew 24, verse 32. Take a lesson from the fig tree. From the moment you notice its buds form, the mere scent of green, you know summer is just around the corner. So is it with you. When you see all these things, you know he's at the door. Don't take this lightly. I'm not saying this for some future generation, but for all of you. This age continues until these things take place. Sky and earth will wear out. My words won't wear out. This is a message Bible, by the way. Moving on. But the exact day and hour, no one knows that. Not even heaven's angels, not even the Son, only the Father knows. The arrival of the Son of Man will take place in times like Noah. Before the great red flood, everyone was carrying on as usual, having a good time right up to the day Noah boarded the ark. They knew nothing until the flood hit and swept everything away. The Son of Man's arrival will be like that. Two, two men will be working in the field, one taken. One left behind, two women be grinding at the mill, one be taken, one left behind. So stay alert. You have no idea what your master, when your master will show up, what day your master will show up. But you do know this. You know that if the homemaker had known what time the night of the night the burglar would arrive, 
He would have been there with his dogs to prevent the break-in. Be vigilant, just like that. You have no idea when the Son of Man is going to show up. Who here qualifies for the job of overseeing the kitchen? A person the master can depend on to feed the workers uh, on time each day. Someone the master can drop in on unannounced and always find him doing his job. A God-blessed man or woman. I tell you, it won't be long before the master will put this person in charge of the whole operation. But if the person only looks out for himself and the minute the master is away, does what he pleases, abusing the help and throwing the drunken parties for his friends, the master is going to show up when he least expects it. And it won't be a and it won't be pretty. He'll end up in the dump with the, with the hypocrites out in the cold, shivering, teeth chattering. That's why it's going to be. He's not going to come. He's already actually announcing himself. He's telling us. I wanted to mention that when we were at Thessalonians. In fact, you know, so many of us know he's coming. We can just tell. Because we read the word and, and like he said, we can tell that the time is near. But we have to be really, really sensitive to that correction that he wants to do in us. Like I was telling you about yesterday, he was hinting to me that I was spending time on myself and I shouldn't, I shouldn't have been. I should have been doing what he wanted me to do. And I already knew that, but I forgot about it because I was letting my flesh have its way. And, and that's how we get distracted. Our, our flesh starts getting in the way. And we don't want to do this. We don't want to do, we don't want to do what he said to do all the time. And so, and I know we talked about that, but that's what he's saying here. You know, we, sometimes we're, we're doing, um, we get, we get caught up in doing what we want to do. And, um, we're totally ignoring what Jesus told us to do to begin with. And we're just really um, looking out for ourselves, like it says here. We're, we're doing what we please. And then if Jesus shows up, um, Matthew 7, 21 through 23, in verse 22, but Lord, I did this and I did that. I did this in your name. And he tells them, Away from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. Why? Because they weren't doing what he said. Not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I know Jesus is coming. I know he's coming, but I got to do this. I got to do that. Yesterday we talked about living under the blessing rather than trying to figure out what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear, where you're going to work. We're all wrapped up in that. And we're not watching for Jesus. And by watching for him, we are training our flesh. We're getting ready for that unannounced visit. Getting ready for Jesus to just show up and we don't have to repent. We don't have to argue. We can be that person that called him Lord. And then every time he corrected us, we said, okay, I submit. I see, I see, I got off track. I'm coming back. That's exactly what I do. And, you know, so often he reminds me, you want to be corrected, right? And I'm like, yes, I want to be corrected. So then get your flesh under because your flesh is fighting you. Your flesh is always going to resist your spirit. And so we always have to keep it under. And I know I said that multiple times, but it's a good thing to keep telling yourself my flesh is going to try to rule. The enemy is going to pull on your flesh and try to rule you. So when Jesus shows up, you want to be sure that you're not in that position I was in yesterday. You want to be sure that you're doing your assignment, that you're doing exactly what he told you to do. Not that he shows up and you're not doing it. You don't want him to show up when you're not doing it. And that's what he's talking about. If he, if he shows up, and you're not doing what he's calling you to do. It's going to be like a thief in the night. You didn't know he was coming. You knew he was coming. But because he took so long, you took a little snooze and you decided to do what you wanted for a while. You decided to say, oh, well, well, right now I'm just going to do what I want to do. Right? Just like if you go on a diet, lots of people 
um, all of a sudden, you know, if, if you don't have your flesh under control, you'll be, well, I'm just going to eat what I want today. I just feel like doing this. And lots of time, lots of times we don't want unexpected company because we're being about ourselves. Well, I'm just going to do what I want today. I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to clean the house. I'm not going to make my bed. I'm not going to get dressed. And I'm just going to, um, I don't know, whatever you do. And um, then somebody comes over and you get mad at yourself because you weren't ready. Or maybe you get angry with them. That's exactly what's going to happen when Jesus comes. If you're not ready, you're going to be so upset with yourself. Or maybe you're going to be upset with him. Maybe you're going to hate him and wish he never came because you weren't ready. And you can't say, why didn't you tell me? Because he's telling everyone. He's making sure everyone knows. Wherever you are, he can speak to you. But on the other hand, you have to be open. You have to say, correct with me, Lord. Tell me. If you keep ignoring him and you just turn away from him, then you're separating yourself from him. Then you said, away from me. I don't want to know you. Away from me. Don't correct me. I just want to do what I want to do. And then on that day, um, you're going to see that you really didn't want to say that. You didn't really want to say that. And so he's telling you ahead of time. If you deny him, he's going to deny you. He's telling you ahead of time, get ready. Let him correct you. Let him instruct you. Let him say, get ready for me to be there. Let, let him say, put that aside. Do this instead. Whatever he's telling you to do, uh, and you don't do it, you're ignoring him. And if you're not letting him correct you, you're not going to be ready. You're just not going to be without spot or wrinkle. You're going to have blemishes, whether it be unforgiveness or having a God before him or, or whatever it is, that's, that's part of getting ready. He wants you to be ready. He's so good. He, he, he's not letting anything go unsaid. He's telling us things to come. I want to be corrected. You want to be corrected so that you can be ready. Watch for him by letting him correct, letting him correct you. Watch for him by not letting your flesh have its way. Ask him to correct you. Revelation 3.19 he dearly and tenderly loves those who he corrects. When he starts correcting you, you start understanding the seriousness of his will and how you need to oblige him if you want to live with him. Revelation 3.20, he said, if you heed his voice, if you're going to do what he tells you to do, if you're not going to ignore him, he's going to come. And live on the inside of you. And he's going to start teaching you. Correcting you. Telling you things to come. Letting you know the time is near. And you have to be sensitive to the things that he's saying to you. If you're not sensitive to what he's saying to you. You're going to be more sensitive to your flesh. That's all there is to it. Either you're going to be sensitive to him. Correcting you. What he's saying to you. Or you're going to be sensitive to your flesh. You're going to let him have his way in you. Or you're going to let your flesh have its way. It's one way or the other. If you never asked Jesus to come and live on the inside of you. If you didn't make a serious commitment to heed his voice. If you are willing to let him correct you. Then I'd love to say this prayer with you. I'd love to pray with you and ask. Accept that knock on the door, Revelation 3.20 says he's knocking at the door of your heart. And if you allow him to come in by heeding his voice, he's going to come in and live on the inside of you. Yes. He he's going to tell you things to come. He's going to remind you of things he said. Yesterday, he reminded me of what he said. And then you get to choose. Are you going to obey him? Or are you going to ignore him? If you're going to obey him, let's make that commitment today to do that. Let him correct us and get us ready. So that day when he comes unannounced, you're ready. You're just ready to open the door and say, hello, I'm ready to go. Okay, let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for correcting us. Thank you for correcting me yesterday. Thank you so much for telling us 
we're not ready. Help us to be sensitive, Lord, to the things that you're saying to us. Thank you for reminding us of what you said. We commit to you to be your bride without spot or wrinkle. We commit to you to heed your voice and not follow after our flesh. To not follow after the voice of the enemy. To resist what, what is strange, but to follow you who bring peace and comfort. We want to be like you, Lord. Help us to be like you. Help us to love and to put other people before ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that as we take care of others, as we do your work, you take care of us. We're never without comfort, love, peace, or joy, or even the things that we need. We thank you for providing for us, Lord, everything that we need. We give you all the praise and all the glory in your name. He's so good, so in love with us. He's so good. Can you just tell? He's telling us that we're not going to make it if we're not going to make it. He's telling us to stretch our faith, to be sensitive to what he's saying to us, because there's no in-between. It's either you choose him and follow him, or you don't. So good. Thanks so much for listening today, and God bless you.